the Once Upon a Time podcast. I'm B, And I'm Lo. And every week we are going through episode by episode and re-watching Once Upon a Time. For Ooh. what reason? We do not know. We're but, legally um, obligated, maybe? Yeah. We've been watching this show for uh, 10 years now, almost 11 now. Mm, don't Upsetting. Like uh, and, uh, just a heads up, this is not a spoiler-free zone. Nope. Uh, we have, like I said, watched every single episode and have been watching for many, many years, so we kind of know what's happening as much as we remember anyway. As much as the show lets us know what's happening. There's some things we cannot explain. That's so true. Why do dwarves come from eggs? Oh, more to come. <laughs> more at six. Uh-huh. Um, but this week, we have an yeah. extra special treat. Oh my goodness. This week, we have a guest star. We do. Hey there. First of all, I'd like to thank you for having me on for the 10-year anniversary episode. <laughs> it's a pretty big <laughs> honor. It is, um, yeah. I am a locally famous Matthew Winter. You might know of me, might not. But if you do know, you know. Exactly. Excellent. <laughs> I feel like, I do feel like this is a guest star, actually. Oh, yeah. Locally famous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, your, what are your qualifications for being here? Please share why why you're here. All right. So um, I've done quite a few podcasts, some voice acting in my time, you know, some small things like that. No big deal. Mm -hmm. Met my wife while I was voicing Gaston on a blog, you know, old hat, <laughs> old hat. Mm -hmm. um, but that same wife who I met was like, hey, I'm going to pull off the one trick I have on you and it's going to work every time. We'll just watch one episode of the show. It's the best episode of the show. I'm going to warn you. And we don't have to watch past the first episode, but we'll watch the first episode. So that's why I started Once Upon a Time. I'm so sorry. Yeah. She should apologize to you. The first episode's really good. It is. And it is really good. And then. And then. <laughs> and then. I deeply believe the writers don't know what a good person is. No. I think we can confirm that. You've listened to our other episodes, I see. <laughs> I have. I have listened to your episodes. Um, I've watched up to somewhere in season two. Emma was watching Mulan and Aurora making out in the woods. I don't That's know. That's how I yeah. remember it. That seems, uh, yeah, that feels right. That definitely feels right. I think the ogres came back for another ogre war? It's the only war they know how to write in their defense. I don't know, is it another ogre war or was it or they just pushed the ogres onto a different continent yeah they were just like it's your problem now <laughs> they we they picked up a tennis ball and threw it past the ogres onto another continent <laughs> yeah I, I think that's how this show solves all their problems mm -hmm. absolutely it also would explain why there's like 13 million different princesses and kingdoms that all they all know each other they're all besties mm -hmm. no one knows all of them well yeah and is invited to all of their weddings mm -hmm. and balls and all sorts of things absolutely how are you okay. both feeling what's happening <laughs> on that note oh i was supposed to be here on an earlier episode but i was mm. too sick to be there fortunately i recovered and then got sick again and now i'm here recovering a second time oh man this is... well we're glad to have you yeah i'm this very is... happy I... to be here objectively this is a better one so you know yes i think it works out you know, it has all I cared about from the last episode and other stuff on top of it. Exactly. So. Yeah, there is a stealthy sighting here, so. Yeah, you know, it's hard to see him. He's so sneaky. He's he so sneaky. When he walks in the middle of the frame and goes, hi, I'm stealthy. <laughs> <laughs> see, he rolled a nat one. Yeah, we have a, a theory that Once Upon a Time is just a very poorly run D&D &D game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, or sure. an RPG of some sort. I stand by that. It's the entirely. kind of D&D &D game where, like, the dungeon masters, like Sidney and other, is also in the game, so they're letting mm -hmm. him get like every power up and everything they could possibly want. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's great. Yeah, awesome. I feel like we're the we're the players that are the note takers that were like, wait, DM, DM, you actually said this five sessions ago, and the DM's like, oh shit, no, I've already written something else. Good. Whoops. So <laughs> we're here now. I'm, I'm so broken. so excited to really <laughs> sink my teeth into this episode because. Ooh. Um, I, I did want to take one second to say I am uh, currently doing another podcast called Golden Truths, an Umineko podcast, a podcast about Umineko, um, which is a podcast about a, an evil witch, uh, evil in quotations, mm -hmm. who traps people um, in a looping area where they are sure. forced mm -hmm. to engage with the worst parts of each other's personalities. Huh. Interesting. Um, 
there's a uh, certain things that are certain truths that are proven by being spoken in certain ways to certain people. Right, um, right. And I thought that that would really allow me to dig into this. Now, the difference right. between Once Upon a Time I was going to say, and... is there a difference? I'm a little confused. Do you have a Once Upon a Time podcast we didn't know Are you about? just on our podcast? I think so. Apparently. Ste- he's um, stealthy. He's the, the stealthy of the oh podcast. No. The difference is, is every episode of Umineko is a 100,000-word novel. Like an so, yeah. <laughs> it's really something. But anyway, that's what I've impressive. learned from Umineko is to seriously overanalyze and dig deep into why things happen because that story is written for you to do that. Like, imagine if Lost knew what it was doing. Why? I think about that a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I have an anime game for you to read. <laughs> I love to read games. Say more right now. Oh, man. What's everyone drinking? Because we're going uh, to need something. Someone has to be drinking something. Someone must be drinking something somewhere. I have, I have brought the and wine. I took a cough drop. Perfect. Slow down. It's too crazy. Too I wild. mean, don't get too crazy over there. I'm going to get some isopropyl alcohol. Whoa. <laughs> I, I brought the wine. Go so ahead. Wine, wine, and wine. Thank God. This Someone week. Did. Yeah. It's, it's different. I'm usually a white wine girl. I was going to say. This week is the week of difference. I That's suppose. Fair. I'm drinking the second. So back up. We had a work happy hour <laughs> at the ripe hour of two o'clock in the afternoon, where they sent us all alcohol, and we got to take what we ordered. And I thought it'd be great to select an apricot bourbon, which I stand by, except for the two o'clock in the afternoon piece. Yeah, all of us were day drunk a little bit. It was an interesting second half of the day. <laughs> Yeah. This is the energy that we are bringing into this yep. episode. Yep. Absolutely. One of us sick. One of us half drunk. <laughs> Woo! One, one of, of us, us is here. here. <laughs> one is here. I would say Lowe's happy to be here. I don't know if you're happy to be here. You know, comparatively, I'm I'm great. This is super exciting. <laughs> That's fair. Oh man. All right. Should we jump in? Let's do it. This is season one, episode fourteen titled Dreamy, which is fun. This is coming out on <sighs> February 13th. Happy Valentine's Day. Love is real. Oh, it's so dreamy. <laughs> oh, as always, let's see what our trusty Disney Plus has to say. Let's see. Mary, Margaret, and Leroy join forces to help nuns sell candles at the Miner's Day Festival. Sure. Mm-hmm. Emma investigates the disappearance of David's wife. She doesn't get a name. Mm-hmm. Just David's no. wife. Yeah. Grumpy falls in love with a fairy. For once, that's a pretty accurate... It's solid. I don't have any real qualms with that. Weird that they don't give Catherine a name. It's just David's wife. I I like Grumpy Falls in Love with a Fairy. That's just, that's a solid string of words. It, I like minute. them. Dreamy <laughs> Falls in Love with a Fairy. That's, that's so true. true. Grumpy does not, it lies. It's already lying to us. Finally, pulling at the threads and it's coming apart. Oh yeah, we have to remember the intern. I don't think actually watched the episode no, before no. writing the and summary. To locally famous Matthew Winter's point from earlier, this show was not made for you to dig your teeth into and rip apart. No, so they're no. not expecting us to notice that in the slightest. No, they are really, really, really like heavily leaning on the fact that there's going to be a week, at least a week between episodes. Oh, yeah. no, oh you mean not... we're not supposed to spend time thinking about how the entire economy of this town was centered around miners trading coal with nuns for <laughs> candles? <laughs> we're just supposed to gloss over it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, that means nothing. That, no. Yeah. Oh. We have a whole day dedicated to miners. We never no. talk about them and or we, we explain cool what it is. Mind. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes it falls in. I, I'm more upset that the sign they set, they zoom in on says Miner's Day, no apostrophe. Miner's Day Festival. Yeah, it's just, it's a day for miners. But it's not theirs. No. It's just well, we think about miners. If I were in charge of a town that had something called Miner's Day, I would have the day before it be called Minor Miner's Day and have it be for kids. <laughs> yes, it's for your child miners. Oh, mm-hmm. no. You can I do all like the it. weird California things, like pan for gold and milk yeah. goats, apparently. I was going to say milk goat. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I, I'm i stalling. Oh, boy. You are, yeah. This isn't even the Belle episode, so I don't know why I'm dreading this. But Oh, but... She makes an appearance, so I'm just... She's here. Unfortunately. Okay. 
I was in love once. <laughs> Takes a drag off a cigarette. I can't keep angry at it yet. I will. Don't worry. I will get very angry about it. Great. Cheers to that. Cheers, everyone. Drink and we'll dive in. Cheers to Dreamy. Mm. No, thank you. All right. We start this harrowing tale in the Enchanted Forest where Nova, a fairy, is transporting dust. And the blue fairy tells her that bag is very precious. It's the year's supply of fairy dust. Seems sure. like a small bag. A very small bag. And She's you know, not doing much good with that magic. So. No. No. It, no. You know, naturally, Nova wants to know when she'll be a fairy godmother. It's going to be a very long time. Blue kind of just shuts that dream down. It's like, no, no, no. Not yet. She laughs. She laughs in her face. She Let's does. be clear. She does. She continues to be a terrible person. Uh, she calls her a dreamer, and then Nova accidentally drops a bit of the dust down into a mine. You mm -hmm. know, seems like she's competent. We should probably let her be a fairy godmother someday. Absolutely. And definitely put her in charge of... And down to the set of <laughs> aliens. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, it's is... just a room full of eggs. That's the most upsetting part. So, you know, part of this year supply years worth of dust falls onto an egg a dwarf egg because you know dwarves are born out of eggs i are, Full grown. are dwarves a platypus like is a dwarf and a platypus and clothed and fully, fully clothed. grown and yeah or those are not clothes but part of his body <laughs> it's possible no. i mean that maybe that's why they had the scissors and that's why the hands no. had to come up oh <laughs> had to cut it off his body yeah. I there I have so many questions. You have about an umbilical this. cord connecting you to your clothes? Mm. No. Mm -hmm. no. Thank you. Oh. It's closer than the center. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Locally famous Matthew Winter has gotten very upset. <laughs> Rightfully so. Truly. Uh, we end this scene with a dwarf hatching. As they apparently do. And it's Ima grumpy. Imagine imagine wow. you're a grown man. You get to set and they're like, climb inside this egg. Now, and pretend to it. just be boar. Do you think boars are up. born with a, a beak tooth, like a chicken? Yeah. Like, <laughs> dip through the shell. Oh, well, no. he was. I think he was using his fingers. That's worse. Yeah. Does he he has have, like, Maybe claws? they have like. Yeah, like a little like claw at the back, mm. like on the heel of his hand. Oh, yep. Can... <laughs> a dew claw. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Well, well, we leave we leave that upsetting scene and go to Storybrook. Leroy is eating at Granny's, and two of the other dwarfs show up, and they say, Hey, buddy, you want to move over one chair so that we can sit together? And he says, No, if I wanted to sit there, I would have. Sneezy, or I forget what his name is in the storybook. Doesn't matter. He sneezes on his food, and he says, Gross, get out. I don't want to eat anymore. Which Solid. Is, yeah. I can't argue with that in this year, 2022. You Absolutely. sneeze on my food, we're done. I have to point in here because, like, this next scene change, it zooms out a bit, and you see the rest of the restaurant mm -hmm. right in front of the door. There's a table with two chairs on it across from each other. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, if I had a friend slash coworker that was named, not I guess he's not named Grumpy, but that was just a grumpy person, I would intentionally steer cl steer clear of them. I would find any table that was not near them. Well, yeah, and you, they had to walk by. The yeah. table to be like, hey, can you move? Yeah, it wasn't no. even like, hey, we want to sit with you, friend. Can you yeah, switch no. over so we can sit with you? No, it's, can you fuck off? We want these yeah. seats. Get out of here. We want to sit together without you. Oh, no, Lo, is that what you and I do when people third wheel our drinking trip? Yes. Is that what we Absolutely. do? Absolutely. Oh, no. No, you don't need to continue that. Is, oh, yes. Oh, no. We ask people to leave. <laughs> and they usually do. I mean, it's of their own volition. Much like... Much like Leroy in this yeah, scene. They're like, like, okay. I, I yeah, don't want to be around this. You guys are so getting weird and sappy. You sneeze on your guests and they leave. Correct. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But we sneeze with our tears. We usually start crying about how much we love each other and it scares them away. <laughs> yeah, they're like, okay, this is enough. Bye. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't want to move. He sne the sneeze situation happens. Leroy leaves. Or he gets up. And Mary Margaret enters and announces that the miner's day is coming. And she asks for help selling candles. And everyone kind of looks away and coughs and does the awkward, like, oh. 
the town headster Prin has walked in. We can't talk to her. This is a scandal. She Someone is a put tramp. An a on her it's, clothes. It's, it's on her car, you see. So we know it she's is. a tramp. Yeah, Can't. you thought that um, uh, Rubble Stiltskin was the only one pulling two Disney roles. Not so. No, no. No, no, no. no. Mary Margaret's over here working double time. Yep. She she walks over to Leroy and says, hey, will you help me? And and he says, no, you're the only person that the town likes less than me. Which is... I'm like, you're in trouble. Yeah. He, he says, no, no. For once, I'm not the most least liked person in town. Which I would argue is false. I think Mr. Gold is wildly disliked more than him more than him yeah i think people are just afraid of him a little bit and therefore deferential that's fair enough they steer clear of gold whereas Mm -hmm. i feel like they're just are like mean to leroy oh poor leroy poor leroy Mm -hmm. emma follows mary margaret and asks about you know the whole situation and mary margaret's like well you know everyone's dropping off of helping me because of me I was supposed to, all these volunteers were signed up last week. Then the scandal mm-hmm. happened. They've all quit. I need help. It's all my fault. Good for her. She and Emma me. goes, good luck with that. Yep. Yeah. Emma says, well, work's calling. Bye. And leaves. Mm. Yep. See ya. Emma essentially walks out of the episode, except for like one or two asides after this. And it's amazing. Yeah. It's the best. Which, no, I, I actually like this episode for all of its weirdness. And I do think it's in direct correlation and causation uh, to Emma's lack of appearance yeah yeah I, it is one of my notes i agree yeah. no it's just i think she just however they've written her just tends to have a doling effect and i get it she's supposed to be our like audience character and therefore just not the fun one she's supposed to be the savior she's supposed to make me feel something other than disdain oh that's a tall order from a blonde lady in a red jacket she that never, never wears, wears the red jacket. <laughs> it's her red jacket. Uh, so Leroy's walking through Storybrooke when Glitter falls on him, and he looks up, and it's one of the nuns from the convent, Astrid. We know her as Nova. They tried very hard on this name change. One second, because at the start of this scene change as well, there's someone putting up a Miner's Day sign, yeah. and they have a paintbrush that has no paint on it that they are putting <laughs> over a spot that is already painted. <laughs> I think that's the same sign that's missing missing the apostrophe. So that I believe it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, double sins. That's the three blind mice in a trench coat. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> there are actually it. three small children here oh, in no. the storybook, and they're just inside a trench coat yep. pretending to be an adult. I believe it. So he meets Astrid, and she's trying to get the lights to work. And Leroy offers his help. He tells her about his dream to sail around the world. He does a lot of oversharing in this very brief interaction. She also puts her hands on his face to, yeah, like, not just... wipe it. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. Yeah, yeah he has, he has glitter. No... Or you glitter, that's what it is, yeah. Weird. Yeah, it's like, it's weird. It's like, she, I mean, it's not just, like, she goes, oh, you've got something here, and, like, kind of lightly touches his face. No, she, like, dusts his face yeah. off. Precisely. Yeah, exactly. It's not great. So he's talking about his dream, and she says, you can do anything as long as you believe you can do it. And he's like, do you, be- do you really mean it? And she goes, yeah, look at you. You fixed the lights. I'm so proud of you. It's weird. She uh, talks to him a lot like he's a child. Yeah. Like, good job, buddy. Look, sometimes a town alcoholic just wants a gold star. <laughs> you know what? Don't we all want a gold star? <laughs> Don't talk about me like I'm not here. <laughs> I also would like someone to come along and give me a gold star for just existing. I can see no less than five gold stars right now <laughs> around you. Yeah, but they're not shining right now. <laughs> I could plug them in and they'd shine, but that's work. So That is a lot of work. We now go to see what Emma had to run off and go take care of. She is taking pictures of Catherine's car. The call she got was alerting her that there was a car accident, that Catherine is missing, and, you know, Sydney's already there doing Sydney stuff. I don't know. Yeah. He says he's trying to do freelance stuff. She keeps confiding in him and giving, like, using him as like a sound, like a soundboard of like, oh, well, maybe this happened, maybe that happened. He's not in your department. You should not be divulging any of this. Yeah. It's really great as this scene continues through the episode, and you see more and more people fucking with the evidence and just touching shit all over the place. And I'm like, <laughs> come on. Right? Like, it's horrible. I know you. I know. I know you weren't like looking to be a sheriff, and I know. You didn't not, get any training. You're not qualified. But, 
I mean, come on. Don't let people touch the evidence. No. And Maybe she's selling tickets to fuck up a crime scene to raise money mm. for the nuns. Yes. No, that's fair. I... I just get angry because Sydney keeps making references of, oh, you know, I'm fired from the mirror or the daily mirror, whatever it's called, which we talked about either last episode or the one before. That is a lie that she did not catch. So it's just free of her. Like, he's here and he shouldn't be and she still isn't aware. Right. And he's still working for Regina. Yeah. I have an insane theory. I'm ready. Mm Mm-hmm. I think that that is a spell that has a limited duration that she casts. If she says, I can detect any lie, then from that moment, for like five minutes in the future, you cannot lie to her. (laughs) But after that, it's gone. It's gone. See? Again, put a a limit on your superpower. Works. Mm -hmm. That explanation works great for me. Oh, absolutely. Or just, you know, don't call it a superpower. Right. Don't say it's always on and always working. But I digress. They're looking at the car, and Sydney says, hey, I'll put you in touch with someone who can get Catherine's phone records. Great. Then who should arrive but David Nolan? And they have a whole side conversation. He's like, oh, I wonder if he knows anything. And Emma's like, no. No, he doesn't. I would know. He told me he doesn't know anything. She's very adamant about this. Well, at that point, mm-hmm. I think she's just like, do, do you think he knows about anything? Yeah. And she's like, nah. No. Yeah, and she does the whole truth thing to yeah, David. I would like, know. Hey, dude. Yeah, later it's like. Oh, it's later. Is, yeah, yeah, because at first, at first it's like the cliffhanger of he's just arrived. And oh, like, you're right. Do you think he knows? Emma's scene is about five minutes of this entire episode, but it's dragged out over the entire fifty-minute episode. Oh yeah, no, we just check in every once in a while. Yep, we really make sure we don't forget that she's the savior. She's here. Don't don't forget her. Back at the Enchanted Forest, we meet Bossy, the dwarf. Of course. And he's cleaning up the newly hatched dwarf, and oh. we know him, of course, as Leroy or Grumpy. The new dwarf says, hey, like, who is that woman I saw before? And Bossy tells him, no, no, there is no woman. Dwarfs don't fall in love. We're not, we don't have children. I don't know what you're talking about. How do you make the eggs? How do you acquire the eggs? Where are the don't eggs coming from? Um, <laughs> lots of gay sex, but you know I'm that. <laughs> Um, Great. They say there's. They say there are no uh, lady dwarves specifically. Oh yes, so. they do call that out. No lady dwarves. So yeah. there was no woman yep. he could have seen. He says, "I can't tell you about that, but you know what I can tell you about? Your job in the mines. Oh boy, let's go meet your brothers." And they show up, and they each get an axe that magically reveals their names. One poor sap sneezes, and his whole personality just kind of sneezes up that stuff. It does, and I I just want to point out something that was upsetting to me on the on the wiki or on the wiki uh-huh. summary. Um, his brothers. It says that they were born from a clutch of eight eggs, and I just <laughs> don't like it. I don't I don't like that we're referring to them as like a clutch. I know that's what you call a group of eggs. I know there were nine eggs, but a large <laughs> mongoose got the last one. So. Yeah, that giant dragon-sized mongoose. Damn him. <laughs> <laughs> the natural Terrible. predator of dwarves is the mongoose. <laughs> I knew it. But it's important in order to keep the dwarf population <laughs> from exploding. Oh, no. Yeah, they asexually reproduce somehow. Oh, no. Therefore, we need the giant sky mongoose. <laughs> oh, no, that was a sky mongoose? <laughs> yes. Oh. Because how else is it getting around? That's fair. This new dwarf grabs his axe and reveals his name is Dreamy. Sexy. (laughs) Foxy Grandpa the Dwarf. What would your dwarf name you? That was actually my next note. (laughs) Oh, man. It'd be cheap to to just say Sneezy because I have terrible allergies, but Loudy. I say this like I have an answer prepped. I have no idea what mine would be. I'm going to go with Loudy. Projection. I'm going to go with Silly. Or, or drinky. I don't like mine, but I'd be, like, sassy. And it, <laughs> I'd be annoyed about it the whole time. You'd be sassy about it. Yeah, I'd that go is... break my axe in hope so that I would get a new one. <laughs> no, no. Then it it would... breaks and it goes sassier. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then the third time it comes back and it says bitchy. And you're like, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, that, I accept that one. Yes, thank you. Would prefer. There it is. Uh, this is also where we see our king of kings, leader of all free men, Stealthy. 
Oh. For his second appearance in, I think, the entire series, and his mm-hmm. last appearance in the entire well, series. He always wears black. That's how you know he's stealthy. He snuck up on me. He's gonna be buried in black. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Yeah. In a few no, he doesn't months. even get buried. He gets left in a courtyard. <laughs> he does. Yeah. No, he doesn't get a funeral. He just gets shot. No, no proper burial for a stealth. No, fine. Keep winning, King. Mm, doing, he's, I'm so proud of him. Out there stealthing in heaven. Oh, sorry. One last thing. Yep. This is probably the most overt Disney reference we've had in the entire show. Not yes. the characters' names, but them mm-hmm. whistling hi-ho. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I was just like, what the hell? Is this licensed? <laughs> when we were first watching it. I'm trying to remember, because it was before it became... It was it Disney was so- property exactly. heavy. Exactly. Yes. I think this is our first very... I mean, obviously, like, we've had Snow White kind of having a thing with birds I like how you're doing a your little Snow bit. White hand. Like, it, it, well, it's, I'm trying to demonstrate her, like, balancing a bird on her finger. We've had moments, but it's always, oh, it could be adjacent to the other fairy tales. This is the first time where it's, oh, no, this is like, just. No, this is just Disney, mm-hmm. for sure. And then later, we'll get Frozen and we'll get Belle in her ball gown no, and stop talking. No. Rumble in I his beast want, outfit. I want this to end. I don't like it. Well, too bad. Huh. Back in Storybrooke, Leroy signs up to help Mary Margaret sell candles because Astrid revealed she accidentally ordered way too many, too much helium and spent their entire budget. Great job. Yeah, she's doing real great. She can do anything. See, this is stuff like this is why I have like purchase anxiety where like I have to check mm-hmm. my card online like seven times oh, before yeah. I buy anything because I'm like, okay, I want to make sure I didn't suddenly like right? I wanted one. I want to make sure I didn't accidentally enter 10,000, just in case. Yep, but she did not do that. She ordered, like, 12 cases or something absurd. Uh, 12, 12 dozen, dozen, so 144. <laughs> yeah. They're set she for life 12. on the helium. And for some insane reason, they don't think to the, each other, let's what sell, can we do with all this helium? We could balloons. actually do something really cool. We could do, like, a parade float or something. That'd be nope. awesome. No, no right. they go, fuck Astrid, you idiot piece of shit. <laughs> Fix My it. My favorite is the boss, our favorite villain. I don't even know what her name is in Storybrooke right now. I'm too mad at her, but Blue Fairy's like, this is your problem. Fix it. You are in charge. Ma'am, you are the boss. I, God, and the Pope are all mad at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus terrible. hates you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she said that. It was horrible. <laughs> Astrid has spent the entire budget and... Leroy is Twitter pated or something and learns that rent on the convent is due next week to Mr. Gold. He won't give them a break and he's like, no, no, not on my watch. Astrid, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to sell all of the candles, even though you only sold 42 last year. It's fine. I will sell all of them. It's a bold <laughs> statement. It is. Yep. So this is a bit of a meta thing. Okay. But every once in a while, I'm, I do not mean this as an insult, um... A lot of the actors and actresses in the show are good to mm-hmm. pretty good. But then you have, like, Mr. Gold being one of the best actors of modern yeah. times. Yeah. Um, you have Regina running close behind him as, like, the second best actor in the show. And then you have, like, a handful of other people who just kick ass at what they're doing. Like, Glass's mm-hmm. actor is doing amazing portraying uh, all of the terrible things he's supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And Leroy is selling this so good at being the most curmudgeon piece of shit, but just <laughs> yeah. melting to Astrid, like, I'll sell a thousand of them. They didn't have me last year. Let's do this. Yeah. No, it's very, very interesting just in that like, you get this core group of characters that you're like, wait, I actually really care about you because your actors are selling the right? shit out of what is on the page. Oh, absolutely. Truly. We were just talking about last week how much um, how much fun it is to have Regina and Rumpel yes. on the screen together. Oh. Anytime you get that, and they do a good job of not giving it to you too often mm-hmm. to where it becomes commonplace. So anytime they're on screen together, you're like, yes, I love this scene. This Give is me the weird scene. tension. Give me the weird tension right now. It is the best. Because when Rumpel and Regina meet in uh, the spooky woods or whatever it's mm-hmm. called. We don't know. They um, don't know either. They change it every time. Mm. When yep. they go through the woods door and meet up with each other, <laughs> they always have the energy of basically bad guys in a Power Ranger show just hanging around, yeah. and it's amazing. Yeah. But then you go to reality, and it is even more ridiculous because it's like a Law and Order episode. <laughs> it's incredible. Great. 
It's so much fun. And the best part is, neither of those people lost their memory. They're the same people. It's They're just great. doing They're that. They're just <laughs> pretending that, they, like, oh, no, this is you like, don't know. They really understood their role assignment and were committed, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can tell because they stick around. He got a costume. He wanted to do the Mr. Gold persona yeah. thing. Yeah. He, he got some lotion and got rid of the scales. No. Straightened his Five. teeth. It's great. So we find... Emma, and she's questioning David about what happened, and David is shocked that Catherine has disappeared. Has no idea. And Emma says, okay, well, tell me the truth. And David says, no, I, we haven't spoken at all since I ended things, or since she ended things, I guess, technically. He says, no, we haven't talked to Emma. With her superpower, goes, okay, I believe you. That's more on that later. This one's hard to defend. It, yeah. It, Emma does this to herself. I have no I, The I. Her. There, I, I have a defense for it. I'll hold on to it. But I only have a defense for it based on things we didn't get to see. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. Therefore, it's not fair. But I'm, I'm still curious about it, though. So I'm, I'm interested yeah. to hear your take. I, I, will hear, I will hear the defense. We move over to Regina. She has received a fax of all of Catherine's phone records, and she calls Sydney and says, hey, these are going to be useful. So you know that's going to be something bad. Nothing good can come from that. We're now back in the Enchanted Forest, and Nova picks up dust from the mines. She's having a really bad time at it because she can't turn off the machine, and it's going to spill everywhere. And she Why goes, is she picking up the year's supply? Oh my god, why are we trusting her? Yeah, yeah. Locally famous Matthew Winter. Who who runs the phone company in the story book? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great question. It's a great question, and it actually does that that plays into my my defense of this. No okay. goddamn way. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm Not really, but like en- enough. a little. Okay. Enough. Anyway, you were saying that Nova was having trouble reaching something high up. Thank God a dwarf was around to reach it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just don't understand why she thinks she's going to be a fairy godmother. She's really bad at her job. She can fly. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm. I had needed all all her about all that. her fairy dust was you know no. down there, and she would have had to grab it, and that was too much for her. That is so. too much. She but... has one brain cell, and <laughs> it only operates half the time. That's fair. Just suck the dust back out of Dreamy. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, truly. Yeah. But lucky for her, Dream- Dreamy shows up and turns off the machine, and. Then she puts the dust onto a platform that starts to lift up, and she says, oh no, that's the year's supply of dust, so we have to go and save it from being incinerated. Sure. Naturally, this is the fairy we've chosen to carry the year's supply of the fairy dust. Why? Do you think the blue fairy, for some insane reason, is trying to make yes, things worse? You know, she's a drum absolutely. up a shortage to make uh, magic even more valuable, increase her position in the world? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, because the blue fairy is the real villain of this show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, all of this happened and happens, and Dreamy looks at her and goes, you'll make a great fairy godmother. I no. You can be anything you want to be if you just dream it, or something yep. like that. Yeah. He, uh, th- the same thing that exactly. was said to him in and Storybrooke. What a it's a bonker sentiment. You just saw this woman fuck it up twice in a row. Right. Like, you saved her, and then she fucked up immediately uh-huh. after. Just hucking stem cells into an incinerator. Basically... <laughs> He also reveals that he's one year old at this point, so... I don't like that. I really don't like that. I don't either, but you need to know. I don't like that he goes, like, I'm one year old. Like, I've seen so much of the world. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's supposed to be funny, but it just upsets me. Yep. Uh, going back to an earlier thing we were saying, um, Nova's dwarf name is clearly Thirsty. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Not incorrect. Uh, no. She's looking for a short drink of water, and she found one. Yes. So, you know, he builds up her ego. They talk about fireflies and traveling. To, well, I don't know. We talk no, about like Captain Malcolm Reynolds. <laughs> yep. That's it. Right, right throughout the conversation. Mm-hmm. It's weird. It is. We now go back to Storybrooke, and no one's buying the candles from Mary Margaret. What a shock. Insane. My God. Yeah. She, she walks up, Mary Margaret walks up to Emma and goes, hey, what makes me look more pathetic? Yeah. 
And then uh, I look at her, and she goes, scarf or no scarf? And I look at her, and at the same time as Emma, and I'm sure you guys did yep. too, you said scarf. No, it's yeah. a sympathetic scarf. I don't know why I clung to that idea. And in college, for a long time, I was like, oh, gotta get my sympathetic scarf on. Yeah, mm-hmm. the sympathetic scarf. You look scarf. like the little match girl in Russia <laughs> or something. Yeah. Right, you're very clearly cold, and you can't keep your body temperature she up. Has no so neck when she wears that jacket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, truly no. Like there is just a mound where her neck should be, and that is how I want to live my life. Mm-hmm. Just covered from the neck down. Amazing. With her head on top of her outfit, she looks like a ski cap with a puffball on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly it. Mm-hmm. So she gets this advice from Emma, and still isn't working. Leroy says, "Hey." We should go door to door. And she says, that won't work. They don't like us. And he's like, correct. They'll pay us just to leave. Again, a bad line, but the delivery sells it. <laughs> yes. It's so good. Delightful. He's, he's so good. I, he is convinced this is going to work. And he makes me believe maybe maybe he's right. Maybe I would yeah. pay him just to leave. <laughs> yeah. We then get the uh, most upsetting montage I of don't... doors. <laughs> so, yeah, we have the doors, but... The first person's supposed to be someone. Garrett, what? The, we were so upset. Why is he slowly I, is it eating your, your Maybe he looked very Is it sad. Rabbit? <laughs> is it Bugs Bunny? The, the white like, rabbit and his wife? <laughs> don't know. He's just chewing on a carrot. Staring a at carrot. them. A yeah. full carrot. A Not whole like unpeeled carrot. carrot he is just <laughs> chomping on. I, I like... In my brain, I was waiting for him to be like, okay, what's up, Doc? Like, right? <laughs> <And> I, <laughs> I was waiting for it. What was happening? What's up, Tramp? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish that had happened. Would have been perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, they're trying this door-to-door business, and everyone slams the doors in their faces. Emma meets with Sydney, and Sydney says, hey... Have you ever considered that pixie cut over there might be suspicious? And Emma's like, absolutely not. Mary Margaret would never do anything. Shut it down immediately. Um, hold on. Let's let's think this through, Mr. Glass. Are you suggesting Mary Margaret stopped a racing car or <laughs> hid in the back of a car and throttled her? Yep. What do you want? Yep. We don't know. Everyone knows that's the next step after adultery. The lady <laughs> is made out of wicker. She couldn't hurt anybody. Straight to throttling. Once you once you've been an adulterer, straight to throttling, you gain superhuman strength and you just have a compulsion to hide in the back of a car. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, glass would know, I guess. <laughs> I Except mean, he had look. A weird snake. Yeah, look. He straight up murdered a man, so he's just like, yeah, I've been there. This is what happens. This is the next step, right? This is the natural next step. You fall in love with someone's partner, and you gotta kill the guy. You know, that's something you should really admit to your partner when you start a relationship. Just be like, yeah. I gotta let you know, I got a weird snake. <laughs> You're right. It was a really weird snake. Mm-hmm. I hated that snake. From here, we go back to the Enchanted Forest, and Bossy meets with Dreamy in the tavern. It's the only tavern set we have on this whole show. Yeah. We see it every few episodes. Can't wait for Hook to dance and sing in it. Oh my gosh, my favorite episode. The best episode. It's beautiful. But they're in this tavern, I guess, after a long day of work? I don't know. They're sure. all drinking, and Dreamy's like, oh, you know, I don't feel like myself. I'm woozy. I'm kind of weak. And then... <laughs> It's basically like the we're, She's in Love song from Little Mermaid on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty. And Bossy thumps the door down and says, Dwarves can't fall in love. <laughs> exactly. But, but first we have yes. cigarette smoking <laughs> Bell over here. Yeah, Bell's in the tavern. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Because she's broken hearted and drinking away her sorrows. And she's like, love. Solid. You're in love. And I know because I've been in love once and love doesn't last forever so you need to go find your love and it's really a, a fine set of sentences until you realize he's talking about Rumpelstiltskin and they he antagonized her their entire it's not a relationship the time she was at the dark castle he just right the, her, her entire hostage situation yeah 
there, I think that there is a chance that that situation could have played out in a way that wasn't terrible. Yeah, sure. But Regina forced the hand and made everything get real weird real quick. Real weird. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, I think I think if it, everything had occurred naturally without yeah, Regina's there's... interference, like, we would have had a traditional Beauty and the Beast story where he Correct. got better because he was trying to be better for her. Just stay off the road. Please. Stop going on the road. <laughs> All Regina does is ride on it. Yeah, true. What does she She's do not day? ruling. Nope. So Creamy's talking to Belle and it's like, oh, well, I don't think she loves me. You know, she was just talking about these fireflies and, you know, her heart's been broken enough or something. I don't know. And Belle's like, no, no, that means that she loves you. You need to go find her. She wanted you to go see the fireflies with her. She did not. I was I was there. I heard the conversation. Never did Nova say. I mean, she was she was doing the weird like. So there's this hill. It's a safe it, day. Yeah. <laughs> like, Very weird. It was yeah. But again, what we what she failed to take into account is that um, Dreamy is one year old. So <laughs> no. And an idiot. Yeah, correct. Because he's one. Well, he he stops being an idiot so fast. It's so like, fast. listen, we got to think about the socioeconomic <laughs> situation here. We can't just keep going on. Like, it's just we're gonna break apart the entirety of what we have built. It's just a lot. Yeah. What are these lights? <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to be pragmatic with these things. Exactly. So I was like, Dad, no, no, she loves you. Go back over to Storybrooke, and Leroy sees Astrid. Um, he and. You know, at this point, Mary Margaret's like, you need to tell me. We're not going to be able to sell them. And he tries. And by that, I mean, he's like, we sold them all. We yep. did it. Mm -hmm. Good for us. And Astrid yep. is so excited. Mary Margaret's like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Those cost $5,000. And Leroy's like, no, nah, no. Nah. I'll get $5,000. And that's fine. You know, great scene. Again, this is just another bit about just how good Leroy's delivery is, having just real dumb shit to say, but saying it with his full heart and soul while looking like him. the grumpiest person who's ever lived. And he's just like, I got some bad news to Astrid. And she goes, oh no, what? And then you can see him once again, just completely melting. And he goes, you and the nuns are going to be real busy because we sold them all. You got to make more. <laughs> oh. He's convincing. I will give him that. He very much is. I believe him. Oh, yeah. I mean, again, I mean, we're not going to address the fact that he's flirting with a nun. And I mean, someone's hey. going to call it out, but then we're not going to address it after that. No. She made an oath. He didn't. No. That, exactly. No, you're right. Good catch. He could be a nun. Could be. I believe. He, he'd he'd be fit anything right you in. want if you believe. In the Enchanted Forest, Dreamy meets Nova on the, the hill that she was talking about, the Firefly one, and he looks down at the town lights, and it's like, wow, fireflies. Dreamy is very brave. Again, he, this man is one. Exactly. He's one and has lived in a cave. Mm -hmm. Yep. Precisely. He's lived under a rock. What's more attractive than that? Nothing. Perfect. Nope, that's what I look for in a man. Mm-hmm. One and lives under a rock. Yep. Uh, eventually the fireflies start to glow and Nova points at the lights and says, here they are, look at them. They're beautiful. And Dreamy says, oh, you're so lucky, you get to travel the world. And she says, oh, not really, I'm in the clouds and it's not the same. And then she kisses him. Sure. Why, Why not? not? Yeah, I think they are like, hey, let's yep. run off and live life. Live. With our skills together, we're unstoppable. Exactly. Yeah. She pulls off and she, he pulls back and she's like, let's do it. Let's meet here tomorrow. We're going to run away. We're going to travel the world. I'll deliver the dust. We'll meet here. We'll go. Let's do it. They have a plan. Mm -hmm. At the very it's end a good of the plan. It is. It's, it's a very good plan. Right. In <laughs> Storybrook, Leroy meets with Mr. Gold, and he's trying to sell his boat for five thousand dollars because that's what he can come up with. And Mr. Gold's like, "Nah, the best I can give you is three. And he's like, "No, no, no, no. I need five thousand because I need to save the nuns. This is for the nuns." And Gold's like, "Absolutely, fucking not." They miss a payment. Oh, now I, that I'm... I can kick them out, I have a thing against nuns. Like, he's very adamant. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, now that I know that it's about the nuns, it's absolutely not now happening. Now I'll only give you $5 for the boat, actually. Because it's for the nuns. I just... Is he... Is he anti-Catholic, or is this the Blue Fairy <laughs> okay, specifically? We were talking about this. We think it has to do with Balefire and the Neverland situation and Tinkerbell and... 
Because and that he... The portal, because she gave him the bean and was like, go, yeah. kiddo. The blue fairy gave Neil, or Bay the bean that sent him to our world oh, originally. Right. But we so think I that's think it, that's what a it. bonkers statement to say to someone that doesn't have that knowledge is to be like, yeah, fuck nuns. Fuck them. <laughs> hate nuns. What kind of person are you? It's a great question. We'll never get that answer. No. Astrid arrives with a pie to say thank you to Leroy after Mr. Gold leaves. And, and Leroy tries to, like, put the tarp over the candles, but doesn't do a good job at it because she sees him and is like, hey, you lied. How dare you? And Leroy tries to apologize and is like, you know, you believed in the wrong guy. Sorry, my bad. To see these walls go back up. He's yep. Grumpy is grumpy to be again. Him. Grumpy, grumpy. Pity. We go back now to the phone record situation. Sydney brings him over to Emma at the sheriff's office, and he points out a call between Catherine and David an hour before the crash, which is uncomfortable since David said, no, no, I haven't talked to her since she and I split up. Hmm. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. We leave that there and go to the Miners Day Festival. Harry Margaret still hasn't sold any candles, and you know, it's a sad time. She also notices that Leroy has feelings for Astrid and is like, "Hey, you picked the most unavailable person because you know she's a nun. Yeah, why not?" And he's like, "Yeah, we're not so different, you <laughs> and me. We both pick people that are unavailable, apparently." So they have a nice little bonding moment, I guess. He's Nuns and affairs are apples and nuns, apples. If I remember Catholic school somewhat well, nuns are married They're to God. They're married to God, oh, yes. We, ha- we do have a thing going here, then. So okay. it is an adultery situation. I'm Leroy wants that nun to cheat on God. Fuck yeah, Leroy, <laughs> get it. You gotta cuck God. <laughs> you can do whatever you want if you believe in it. God's always watching. God can't hear you. <laughs> oh, no. You gotta cut God. <laughs> oh. That's where this Wednesday is yep. headed. Great. Yep. And so they're talking about this, and he points. So he points out the similarities, and he asks her, "Okay." Obviously, your situation sucks. People are calling you, you know, a tramp and not talking to you. But do the good memories make it worth it? Do you still have good memories? And she kind of says, you know, that's what life's about. He tells Mary Margaret to stop feeling sorry for herself. It's a good moment. I love the thought of her good memories with David. What, when he couldn't fucking talk? (laughs) The best of times. Or when she kept telling him, leave me alone, and he didn't. Didn't leave her alone? Or he yeah. kept trying to hold her hand when she said, please don't touch me. Which moment? Yeah. All the those good memories. At, oh, you know, the days at Granny's Diner where they're at different tables. Mm-hmm. He's reading Anna Curran in a... He's reading... On her recommendation. <laughs> Insane. You know what That's book good. you should read? Anna Karen in a... Such good memories. So, he, yeah, he says, stop feeling sorry for yourself. And he says... There's only one thing that can stop the pain. And he grabs up the pickaxe and goes to the roof. And, and boy, what a... For a what? Time. It's so bad. What a 2011 the moment. <laughs> the the, the suicide best. baiting. It's terrible. He stands there for an uncomfortable amount of time, like, on the edge of the roof, holding the axe at his side, just looking down. And Mary Margaret's like, no! Don't jump! And he's like, what the fuck? I wasn't going to jump. Do you I'm know? very sturdy. I could hurt someone. <laughs> yeah, that was my favorite part. <laughs> That's what I turns him around someone. from being tasteless to hilarious. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. The second he's like, what the hell? Like, no, I Can could hit see? someone. I'm very durable. <laughs> and he is, to his credit. But no, no. He's very solidly built. It's true. No, his plan is to take the pickaxe, and much like many of our problems in the story, Brooke, the answer is arson. <laughs> Essentially. Yeah. yeah. Takes the pickaxe Public and nuisance. breaks the electrical box. 
You tell them why it's how. 1,000 possible instances of arson. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, they all lose power and now people have to buy candles. He's created a supply and demand situation. <laughs> He's learned from the Blue Fairy. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> He's solved the Storybrooke economy. Oh, no. <laughs> In the Enchanted Forest, Creamy is leaving the dwarves, and he's telling them all goodbye, like, oh, I'm in. Well, first, back up, backtrack. He tries to leave, and Stealthy's like, where the fuck are you going? <laughs> Stealthy's like, if you wanted to sneak out, you should have smoked to me. <laughs> True. And those are literally, I think, the last words we will ever hear <laughs> Stealthy say. I think you're right. Don't think you're wrong. Pretty sure that's how it, yeah. I don't think he says mm -hmm. anything else the entire show. No. He I has think. never helped Grumpy sneak out anywhere no. in his life. Never. No. But, you yeah, know, they all band around him and be like, oh, where are you going? And Grumpy's, the Dreamy's like, you know, I'm in love. I've got to go. I don't need my pickaxe anymore. I don't need hey, it guys. where I'm going. Hey guys, have you thought about not being part of a slave class that harvests magic for people who no. call themselves fairy godmothers no. and don't seem overtly magical beyond that? Nonsense. You're talking Maybe crazy. we should seize the means of production. <laughs> Is this the plot of Newsies? <laughs> <laughs> Where is the dwarf Jack Kelly? <laughs> I'm enjoying the thought that in the original telling of Once Upon a Time, uh, Nova was played by Bill Pullman. <laughs> oh no. It's, it's over, Davey. I have the <laughs> low ground. <laughs> How did I know? <laughs> oh, there are actual tears. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, boy. Where am I? Um, okay, so, yeah. He's, I say I'm in love. I want to leave. Then I'll pick up. So as Dreamy's telling everyone goodbye, they're all kind of banding around him. Who shows up but Bossy? And he says, hey, you can't leave and dwarves can't love. No. He once again kicks down the door and goes, dwarves can't love. And Grumpy's like, ah, oh, damn, you're right, dude. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Good point. Got it in one. Yeah. Yeah. And then the blue fairy arrives and is like, no, no, he's right. The actual you villain of the show. You are here to serve me. Your overlord. Harvest my magic. <laughs> exactly. She shows up and backs him up and is like, no, no, no. If you do this, it'll cost Nova her dream. She'll lose her wings. She won't be a fairy godmother. Let's be real. Nova is never going to be a fairy godmother. Ever. I think the laughter that Blue <laughs> displayed the moment she even, like, expressed a desire says she was never going to be a never. fairy godmother. No. Mm -hmm. But at any rate, Dreamy takes all this and he goes to meet Nova on the hill and she shows him a ship and is like, hey, look, we can take it and go. It's going to be great. And he interrupts and says, no, we can't be together. They belong with their own kind. You're Juliet. I'm Romeo. We can't do this. We're not special. We're no different from anyone else. Why should we get to be together? And Nova's like, oh, because we're in love. And Dreamy says... You have to keep the races separate and equal, Nova. <laughs> exactly. And Dreamy says, we need to put the dream away. Sure. She says that she Just loves... Just put him. a pin in it. And, yeah. And then she goes, no, but I love you. And he says, no, I can't love. We, I'm not capable of it. I was told so by Bossy, and therefore it must be true. And by your boss. And she goes... You talked to the Blue Fairy? Yeah. Yeah. And now, like, what'd she say? I didn't want to. She just floated down like Jesus on high. <laughs> With her weird jellyfish dress. Jesus hates you. <laughs> You're bad and you should feel bad. <laughs> so he goes back to the mines and it's very sad. And he says, I need my axe. And Bossy's like, oh, yeah, here you go. Welcome back. My plan worked. Ha ha ha. And he goes, and he, he's like in a rage room. He's pretending he's the only one there. He's going ham on this rock with his axe. Completely breaks it, and he says, I need a new one. Gets a new axe, and with it, a new name. Grumpy. An origin dun, dun, dun. displayed. What if it just said, like, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> I like I think Stephanie. Says... <laughs> Karen. It says bossy, too. <laughs> 
bossy earth. Big bossy. <laughs> Do they have to fight to the death then to be like the ultimate bossy? Yeah, yeah. and when they do, they get another axe and it says bossiest. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So we are we are going back to Storybrook, which is where we end the episode. Mary Margaret and Leroy sell all of the candles and he takes the money over to Astrid and you know, he's like, No, we're gonna fix up the boat, we can go sailing together. This is going to be great. And then fireflies appear. Because, of course, mm. them. Because nice, cute. Yeah. I, I, I almost want to hold this one in my quiver, but I need to not do that. Because this seems an awful lot like a happy ending for people. Yeah. Who it's... seem to have a bright future ahead of them. Guess who wasn't fucking present during any of this? <laughs> so true! <You're> right. <laughs> like, she really so my theory... The only way that I can really figure out how this show could possibly be working is Regina legitimately lays out, here's a bunch of plot lines uh -huh. are for ways that will put people in miserable mm -hmm. situations, so he will fail to do the candle thing, it won't work out, yep. and he'll end up miserable. And that's his terrible thing. Snow White and Prince David yep. are supposed to be so pure of heart that they know that they, they love each other, but they can't be together because he is married to someone else. Right. It is a terrible situation. They are trapped there. The problem is, is it doesn't work usually, no. but this time, this time the characters worked across both worlds for once. Yeah. Yeah. I no, know. it's very it's... true. And Well, and I would say your theory totally holds up. You could say, okay, maybe the David and Mary Margaret kind of crossing those lines could be... Emma's influence on yeah. Mary Margaret, mm -hmm. kind of, and therefore the savior energy oh, I don't coming like into their, she like... She charged her mother with energy <laughs> to affect Grumpy <laughs> to explode a fuse box? No, right. no, I'm talking simply the Mary Margaret and David side of things. I see. She has nothing to do with this, That's, which is what doesn't make sense. working in spite of her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. It is. Regina shows up at the sheriff's office and is like, hey, give me information. And Emma's like, no. Because now I'm the sheriff. Yeah. Well, now I can, And now I care about it, by the yeah. way. Now that it's personal, I'm going to act like sheriff. Thank you. You can't touch my crime scene either. Yeah. It's interesting. No. She's like, I'm not going to tell you you don't work here. Sydney, what do you got? Like, it's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> apparently we trust Sydney now. Yeah, we do. Because her superpower failed. Oh, yeah. So That's deeply. Sad. And we end with Mary Margaret walking through the festival, and, you know, Tramp is still written on her car, and she's pretty sad about it, holding a blown-out candle, and Granny shows up and takes her candle and... Spikes it on the ground. <laughs> Correct. No, she lights it for her and hands it back, showing that they, the town has forgiven her now. She helped the nuns, and now she has been forgiven. Everyone knows that's how you get forgiven. Jesus has forgiven you. You can fuck anyone you want, babe. Exactly. <laughs> Emma then arrives and escorts David to the sheriff's station in her cop car for questioning. She makes him sit in the back seat like he's under arrest. He's not. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's weird, I don't right? Know, I don't know how to unlock the passenger door. I'm really sorry, David. <laughs> right, you want to like, drive? Not... I'll sit in the back. He's not under arrest. No, she literally just said we have to question you about what happened. There's no reason what? to treat him like, I mean, like, uh, granted, you can have your suspicions all you want, and mm. you can be like, this man might have murdered his wife. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But you do not have the legal standing to start acting like he no. is under arrest. It he is not. Been, it could have been, we need, to follow, we need to follow you to the station, you need to come with us to the station, or, hey, would Hop you Hop in I, the passenger seat. Yeah. <laughs> like... Why don't you just jog after me? This town's like one block wide anyway. <laughs> and yet right. no one knows anything. You want to take a pleasant stroll to the police station? Right. It's over there. I can see it. Mm -hmm. Like. No, she just peels out with her sirens on with him once he's in there. As good as, because everyone notices and Mary Margaret's like, what? No. What? And, and that's yeah. where we end the episode. What a cliffhanger. Oh boy, I wonder what this the show is about. insane. This but also, this is probably my favorite episode of the entire show that I remember. <laughs> it's it's bonkers. 
I, I again, no disrespect to the actress. Emma is such a deeply unlikable character. She is, no, it's not, and it's not JMO's fault. No, they, they just not, didn't write her well. She one ups everyone first of all, and that drives me up a wall. That's not how you support someone by saying I've had it worse. It's like, you're like, hey, uh, we need a savior for our town. Who are we going to call? Oh, I know, Judge Judy. <laughs> Precisely. And what do we she call also Kristen does... Wiggs' character from yes. SNL? Well, well, you know what? I actually had two uh, parents who disappeared, so I actually had it worse than you. Yep. Okay? She also does the thing where she gets angry at you. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, I Drives realized nuts. why I really like this episode. No, Henry. <gasps> not a single moment of Henry. That is so true. And again, no I disrespect to Jared Gilmore, but he now he was missing. <laughs> exactly. He's not there if he's not there. Exactly. And I think this episode's interesting because we've gone back to the mold of we're going to give you a character and then show you who they are. We've 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 mm-hmm. got away from it for a few episodes. We're back. We're back yeah. fully. Uh, but I think this is one that again they do a nice, a better job, a nice yeah. job of, okay, cool. we're getting Leroy's backstory, but that's because and Leroy is so integral to this exactly. particular story and, in Storybrooke. And I think it's better mm-hmm. because unlike the other ones where you have Henry like, oh my god, I know who she is, I know who she is. He's not Right, it has to nothing to do with no. it somebody is, clocking him, Yeah, I will say it, were. it is weird that August is missing because you think he'd be at the Myers Festival poking around, being weird, being ominous. Yeah. Maybe we just couldn't get the actor for the episode. Oh, I'm sure we couldn't. Yeah, but. Jiminy probably died in a mine. Who who cares? Well, you know, he's very busy with his dog and that. his files that he doesn't keep track of. Oh, no. Um, no, so I, I would like to speak in defense of oh. the phone records. Please do. And again, we're not given this information, so I am making some huge leaps of logic right. that it's not fair of me to be making. I'm but prepared. what I think maybe you could argue we are meant to insinuate is because Sydney says, I'm going to put you in touch with some, like somebody who gets you the phone records, right? Right. But what the person who's in charge of the phone record, who gets the phone records is Regina, who okay. obviously has a stake in the game of framing somebody. Yeah. Like, so... I could see, maybe we're meant to get, they don't do a good job, but maybe we're meant to get that David's telling the truth. Yeah. He did not mess with, he, like, he didn't call her. He, they That's didn't fair. talk, but Regina messed with the phone records to show <laughs> that You're making me they think did. think my entire... Regina slamming open a Microsoft Excel, <laughs> exactly. ready to destroy like... this man. <laughs> Got my... Photoshop open. I'm going to make okay. it look like he called. Well, so, not, not to get ahead of myself, but it's interesting because I did talk it down as it worked when she was like, he's telling the truth because she did. Right. He's not, I don't think he's lying. So I, I, I don't think, think he's lying. I think the integrity of her superpower, she, she's kind of like, no. Like, she even has a moment where Sydney's like, I'm about to tell you, people make mistakes. And she's like, but I fucking don't, which is false. She does all the time. But right. you can tell she's a little bit put off that her superpower suddenly just didn't work. Right. Suddenly. No. <laughs> suddenly. Yeah, this is a this is an unusual thing for her. Completely it unusual. It never, ever, ever fails. No. I don't know what you're talking about. How dare you slander this woman. Flawless. But that that would be my argument for it. Again, they didn't do a good job if that's what they were going for. But no, that I, would I be my argument. That. David's telling the truth. Regina has she's doing things messed the with the phone records. I can see to that to make it make it look like he. Ooh, when we're when we're done talking about this episode, I'd like to present something to you guys as well. Okay. Oh, wonderful! Everybody. I can't wait. <laughs> but oh. um, oh, what do you have? Something no, you no. want to say? I don't. I just have my note. Just says carrot. We already talked about it. I didn't have it an answer. It just says carrot. It was upsetting. So it was. Weird. What was it? Weird. Who was it meant to be? Please tell us in the comments. Rabbit? Do you know who it's supposed to be? Please tell us. 
please tell us at www.wwo.ww. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly it. Um, no, so I, I, there's one, uh, we said we put a pin in it. Oh, yeah. To come back to this very tiny little detail. It's a good detail. On the board. Oh, maybe, maybe it's a good detail. So, la- last, last episode was going to be? Mm-hmm. Two episodes, Two episodes ago. ago? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we, we, we said, we said that this show never came from my neck. It did not. Never, or Mary Poppins was never present. <laughs> not at all. And then we're watching this episode. You and know how we again, love background shit. You know how weird we get about. No way. We <laughs> always pause. Like now, anytime there's text in the background, we pause. Hold on. I'll be right back. I have to get someone for this. This is important. <laughs> oh, yeah. Extras. Oh my good! Oh my goodness! A second guest star oh, appears. A second guest star appears. A wild guest star appears. A wild Keely has arrived. <laughs> it's fine. I'm just in my PJs, going to sleep. I, I'm sick. What's oh, up? Hello. Oh. Um. So. Oh God! I can't hear anything. You can't hear anything? No. Uh, here, check this one. It's super Hello. quick. Hi, okay. we're happy to see you. Hi. Hi. So, um, you know how we've had conversations about how we're so happy that um, nothing the show has ever done ever brought Mary Poppins on? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. fortunate and blessed. And yeah, I'm fortunate now. and blessed. The, the, this thr- show never came from my throat. Um, so we were watching at this episode, Dreamy, mm-hmm. and in the nun's room... Wherever the nun's room might be. The convent, I guess. On the blackboard, there is a list of volunteers. And you know how we love to pause everything and see what's going on. And on the list of confirmed volunteers, it's like Carol and Steve and somebody else. James is a and then Steve is a yes, James is a maybe. And I think just, yeah, for the record. And then um, at the bottom, there are two names for the yeses. Mary... And Bert. <laughs> both of them! They're and we there. both, they're there. And I'm yeah. so upset. I'm oh, first we saw Mary in a beat, and we were like, no, they have to give us a better shot of this. So we sat there scrutinizing it, and it's there. It's there. It's Mary and then Bert. And it would be one thing if it was just Mary, and I'd be like, yeah, that's a very Catholic name. Leave it alone. But, but hmm. to have it followed by Bert... Yeah. I'm very upset. Welcome to Some the- set designer is doing more work than the entire <laughs> writing team. Yes. yes. They're like, I want Mary Poppins and Bert to be present here. But only under my watch, not with the show's writing. No, absolutely not. And again, I agree. But uh, yeah, that's the yeah. that's the news. That's the news. I'm so upset. That's horrible news. I'm it's so upset. The worst thing I've heard all day. <laughs> Even just in mention, I'm like, how dare you touch them? (laughs) How dare you bring them into this? That's fair. That's fair. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, that's where we're at. I was dragged out of bed for this. You were. And wasn't it worth it? Wasn't it worth it? Well, you know, I (laughs) was sending you guys nice Mary Poppins things (laughs) from Sweetheart's Night. Yeah. Um... She had a red so, coat on and everything. Did I manifest this? In oh some no! Okay, way? I'm gonna need you to work again on the manifesting other things, <laughs> not Mary Poppins he, in I mean, Once Steve, Upon a Time. Even James were on the list, so you got Bucky and Steve. I'd argue getting close oh, there. Man. Yeah, <laughs> just I don't. So go it's, sleep. Do some manifesting. Yeah, now. yeah. Go go manifest, please. <laughs> Have a nice right. rest. I, I don't think we actually reintroduced. This is uh, Keely. Yeah, she's, she's been on the show before. I'm the Ellaologist. Yes, our local Ellaologist. I'm not supposed to be here for this. Wow, we're so this fortunate. We though. have local Ellaologists and locally famous Matthew Winters. We're so fortunate. So fortunate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're local. <laughs> One of us is certainly famous. <laughs> she's going to go sleep now. Bye! It's <laughs> <laughs> like, that was not worth my time. What are but you talking was. about? <laughs> but it was. At any rate, I'm very upset about it. I think that's fair. Yes. How dare they attack me like that? So, 
to Matt, you say this is your favorite episode. What yes. jumped out to you? What is what is it about the episode? I mean, beyond the people who suck aren't there. That's, yeah. Uh, that's it. yeah for it's me. legitimately, I just think Leroy is probably the most well-treated person from the magical enchanted forest. Yeah. yeah. Um, where, like, even in our world, he still has that very interesting duality of being a very grumpy asshole. Mm-hmm. But he just melts at the slightest ounce of kindness and turns right back into Dreamy. And he just goes heart and soul on whatever he thinks. Yes. And I think that's a really good way to do the duality of the character as it was shown before. Yep. And seeing how he didn't get a happy a- ever after in the uh, Enchanted Forest and how he actually has a chance for one yeah. in the real world mm-hmm. was really cool. I agree. And that kind of set my expectations on where the show was going to go. He said um, that. Where it would be like, these people probably won't get their memories back, but maybe they'll be able to build something new here. No. 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 Take those expectations no. and run them down the drain. Throw him on the ground. Yep. Just bye. But yeah, basically every time Leroy shows up after this, I'm just like, my boy. He's so. great. He's, he's also the town he's crier, and I love that for him. Yeah. Anytime mm-hmm. there's a curse, he just shows up it's and yells here. about the town. It's, <laughs> about it's the here curse. every time they bring that man back on set. Every time the yell, it's here. PS5 yeah. is out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my favorite is that one of these times they're running from the curse, and he just starts like berating David, and is like, "Wait, what's your name?" David. No, that was your other name. Well, it's not. Like, he's like, what the fuck is your name? It's not James. David was your Storybrooke name or your Enchanted Forest name. What is your Storybrooke? Like, I don't understand. And, it's- and then David's like, well, it's David because I'm boring. Boring David. <laughs> he sucks so bad. <laughs> he does. Like, I, like, he gets- another good thing. David wasn't in this episode much. And oh. when he was, he was kind of sequestered away with Emma. <laughs> so yeah. it's better. Yeah. Again, I don't have a problem with David later like i don't have a problem with charming as a person yeah i don't really have a problem with charming i mean aside from the fact that he's willing to let his mother die but other than that other than that she's dead isn't she yeah well yeah she dies she doesn't die when she's supposed to leopold's like mary abigail or your mother dies and the first second he gets he's like peace out abigail i'm not marrying you I'm, I'm willing, willing to face to... the con- <laughs> face the consequences. <laughs> I'm willing to. I mean, the consequences are my mother will die, but I'm, I'm chill with it. It's a price I'm willing to pay. Not okay. I betrayed the king. We have to race back to my homestead before the king does, so we can rescue my mother. He tried. He does. That does happen. She still dies, though. Is the thing. Yeah. Well, That's and damn she, gives, she gives no the weird little like, pregnancy necklace, and is like, "This will tell you what you're having." It's a boy or a girl. Now. Bye. Then she dies. I'm just very sick because apparently I'm King George sure doesn't. I'm pretty sure I saw this, but I, I forgot it because it sucks. Follow through I, on threats. Oh, but we we this made me think of it. We talked about it in the past episode. Grumpy tells Snow when they meet in the cell. I was thrown here because I got the woman I loved a diamond ring and got thrown in jail. I don't remember if there's another dreamy episode. Or I, grumpy there, episode. I, there must be. Or did be? they fuck up their story within three episodes? No, they fucked it up. <laughs> I think uh, within all the episodes I've seen, I would remember if there was another episode about Grumpy. Don't get me wrong. That's yeah, fair. I feel like we must we must get. I feel like very late. That I think somebody went. Um, guys, we said this thing. We need to address it. But that's the one thing they're going to go back to. <laughs> yeah, they're like that's our one continuity error. <laughs> That, the only one we did really good one error we, we did so good but because i i do remember there being something but it, i think it was much later where you remember how the dark one is like the most powerful magical figure on the planet but all he does is fuck around a town and be spooky <laughs> local, yeah he's a cryptid he's the local cryptid yeah yeah <laughs> he just wants to be a sasquatch good for him yeah and he just wants to live in the woods <laughs> and slender man mm-hmm. yeah rumpelstiltskin yep. is slender man now Sure. I, going back to what you just said, though, he is the most powerful person. The Blue Fairy, the first thing she says is, the pixie dust is the most powerful thing in the entire kingdom. Mm-hmm. Oh, you mean like how magic beans are also no, the most powerful thing in the entire me kingdom? started. One day those things are going to come up, and... and... leave me alone, they won't follow me. Didn't Snow White have some pixie dust in her pocket? That was a... She had something? black pixie dust or something. 
Would she shake Maleficent? <laughs> the Blackberry the... Rubble Kill yes. his mother? Yes. <laughs> oh, fuck me. The Blackberry. Please, put my mum down. <laughs> Canonically, I need you to understand. The Black Fairy had a child with Peter Pan <laughs> and gave birth to Rumpelstiltskin. And that's a thing that's occurred. <laughs> Just for the record. Um, yeah. Yep. And then Peter Pan's like, no, I don't want to grow up. I'm going to go and de-age myself so it's better. So I'm a boy now. I'm a small boy now. I'm an asshole. I'm a small boy with a grown man brain and I'm a dick. Okay, I know we're waning on time yeah. here, so I've, I, I've got to yeah. drop my theory here. Okay. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it in. Just going to do a thawing exercise okay. with you guys, okay? Ready. Okay. So, your life is fucked up, your house burned down, right. and your dog betrayed you and ate your allowance. I don't know. Oh, great. So, everything's falling apart. Okay. And then suddenly, some weirdo climbs down from the ceiling. He's like, oh, hoo, 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 you can do whatever you want. Here's your magic spell. <laughs> uh -huh. Good impression. Here's the thought that I need you to really put in your head. Okay. Did Regina invent the entirety of our universe? Or did Regina know enough of our universe that she wrote out like a fake town charter that's, and like gave everyone jobs and that's, shit? I that's... think about this a lot. I don't have it. Right. I mean, the my instinct says the show wants us to say no she's just created a town and this is our normal world that she did not yeah. create only because of the way that like people interact I, with storybrook where it's like I, it's not supposed to be here well, and i think the balefire piece makes it so because rumble Stiltskin already knows mm -hmm. there is a world that exists without magic that her son his son has been sucked away true to. he has and that is before that. so i think Maybe it's, it's but that makes the second exactly, thing true, which yeah. is way say. funnier. <laughs> which means she yeah, had to no. like look through her fucking glass husband and be like, "Well, um, I think a police officer does this." <laughs> no, yeah. that's why. So it's like the Agatha, it's it's the WandaVision Agatha situation. When you get further out in the town, the NPCs are just standing there. They don't know <laughs> yeah, what like to do. Small movements. Oh, the episode where every day repeats, and she's like, "What in the." The hot shit have I created is one. Yeah. Of the by the way, there's episodes. a time loop here. There is a time loop. Confirmed. There's a time loop. Man, we miss Groundhog Day. <laughs> Didn't the Groundhog die? Maybe next one year. Of them? Didn't the Groundhog die? I saw it on the news today. Not. Yeah, Puxatawney Phil just fucking ate shit yesterday. <laughs> no, it wasn't Puxatawney. It was another. It was like Wisconsin has one. Oh, who cares? I right. Puxatawney is the, the one we're thing. supposed to care about, but I'm from Pennsylvania. If there's one magical varmint, it's Puxatawney Phil, and we can leave everyone else That's out of it. That's fair. I respect. Yeah, that. but no, I think back to your point. I think it is Regina sitting there going like, "Oh fuck, I don't know what these jobs are. I don't know what a, a town mayor? looks like." A mayor. I think this is the one I want. Maybe. A mayor is like a, she's got like a catalog of here's different <laughs> universes she could throw people into. She's got an index in the back that just like tells you about a glossary. A it's like here is what this means. You think that's how she's using door? the? Because she this is like a Sims universe and she didn't know what she was doing. So like, you have to have a fucking door here that looks good. And then you zoom well, out. Well, I deleted it's... the ladder on the pool and the little mermaid died. So <laughs> it's like when you zoom out. The... You're putting all the windows on the house in the Sims, and you zoom out, put the walls up, and you're like, oh, fuck, what have I done? <laughs> right, because you did it placed based on, like, what light inside the house? Yeah, you zoom out. It's, it, it's like when you're doing uh, Sim City and you yep. build your whole town and everything, and then nobody drives into the town, and you're like, what did I do wrong? <laughs> what is happening? What could have happened? Exactly. Maybe that's what happened, is Regina was able to play The Sims 2 specifically mm -hmm. on... Uh, the genie's magical glass, and it's just like, well, yep. this is life. Oh, the genie with the UI. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. no. <laughs> and she gets stuck in a time loop and hates it forever. Mm. Yeah. Because apparently they were in a time loop before Emma showed up. Uh, it's the I whole guess. thing. They don't really explain it because it gets kind of dicey if you think about it too much. I, I kind of like the idea of she's le threaded all yeah. of these terrible fates yeah. and they'll all come to a climax and the town will basically just erupt into chaos yeah. and then it all that, resets yeah. and plays out again. It, yeah, that it, would be it, great. At one point, doesn't Emma ask, like, how long have you been teaching here? And Mary Margaret's like, huh. Oh, forever. I like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Yeah, no. The only thing that throws a wrench in this plan is Henry. Yeah. Because, again, if his classmates aren't aging, 
What did Regina think was going to happen? That he'd look down and go, this is normal. Henry is an idiot. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. That's true. Oh. That's true. My kid's six years old right now, and he turned to me and he's like, Dad, oh, magic's not real. What? And I'm like, yeah, it is, dog. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's the realest thing. It's so yeah, real. And, like, my kid at six, crushing it. <laughs> um, have, you but... con- have you considered <laughs> handing him a book with really blotty pictures? Really? Hey, and here's big. a question. Where did that book come from? <laughs> Mary Margaret found it in her closet one day and was like, here you go, mm-hmm. Henry. For you. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> No, no. Why does that book exist? I, well, the because author. the author wrote it. And then that's why the Queens of Darkness exist, because they're like, fuck the author, we're going to make our own happy ending or some shit. And then Henry becomes the author. And he's angsty and angry about it. God wrote the storybook. Uh-huh. Yep. You're telling Henry me is God that's now. the goddamn <laughs> Old Testament of the fairy tale world? It yep. gets worse. Matt, I need you to understand. At one point, we have the sorcerer, and the sorcerer's apprentice. Yep. They even do. Dun, 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 dun. There are brooms. There are mops. But but you... Mickey's Fantasia mm-hmm. hat can like suck your power away. Yeah. Is it still Nicolas Cage? <laughs> I wish. No, it's a very old man. That would have been such a good get for the show. That's exactly the right. Idea. Imagine him fight. playing off of gold. <laughs> I I would give like... anything in my life. To see Nicolas Cage acting alongside Rumpelstiltskin. He came out as, as goth the other day, and I think that I saw that coming. It wasn't on my bingo card for the year, but it makes sense. It does. Love wins. Yeah. <laughs> There's a whole article. I don't know. There was an article that I saw. Probably on I read somewhere. it. Yeah, he's, he's goth. You and yep. your Good article. <laughs> <laughs> At least you all can right. send yeah. that one to me at 8 a.m. I did not. That's, that's, that's all yeah. the most important notes yeah. that I wanted to get through here. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, thank you. Yes. Yeah. For having me. Okay. Thank you so much for yes. joining us. This has been a time. It has been such it's a time. We've got a couple of housekeeping has. things. Yes, we'll, but... we'll housekeep after you, you head off. Thanks for joining us, locally famous Matthew Winter. Sure. Uh, let me do one last plug. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you'd like to hear me talking about an extremely complex and well-written game, uh, go look up Golden Truths, uh, an Emu Neko podcast. Just search Golden Truths. We're on Twitter. We have a, I think we have goldentruths.net or .com or something. Excellent, yeah. Uh, anyway. I'll, I'll put the stuff in our episode summary so people can check you guys out. I'll send the link. Um, but, yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, enjoy doing your wrap-up, and I'll see you next time a dwarf is center stage, I Excellent. guess. Absolutely. We, know who to go to. we look forward to it. We do. All right. Doodles. Bye. Bye. All right. Oh, man. Well, that was a time. Yeah. The housekeeping was... sheet just needs to be fixed. It's light. It is certainly light. I don't, what I don't like is oh. that we now have to put Dreamy and Nova on the fuck first. Do we have to? They're confirmed. There's a confirmed kiss. Oh. They're not going to kiss anybody else, so they're going to be the weird little side note, but Do I they're there. Just to make me feel better, can we put Mary and Bert off to the side? <laughs> on the fuck first? <laughs> Yes, please. <laughs> yes, Good. please. Great. Awesome. Oh, yeah, so, it's a fun couple's date for them it, volunteering yeah. at Miner's Day. So we, we add to the fuck fern family tree. There's nothing, is there? No, no, nothing. We don't spend any time with our, our main family. Wow. And then um, lies, magic beans. The uh, only one, and... we, we already talked about it, and I have to give Emma credit where credit is due. As much as we all know, I hate doing that. Even though canonically in the show she's being told David lied to you, she point blank asks him, hey, did you talk to Catherine? He says no. She believes him. And I do think in the show that is an accurate statement. He is telling the truth. She believes him and defends it and says, no, he told me the truth. He wouldn't lie and is having a crisis now that her powers didn't work. So this is a weird one. Usually I know it's when they lie and we say oh she taught the lie but this Mm -hmm. one since it is a moment of truth and it's it's part of the plot where everyone is saying no he's lying and she's like no he's not i think i have to give it to her yeah no i i would agree i think it's i think we give her a success yep this is 14 begrudgingly right 14 uses uh nine fails five successes a partridge in a pear tree a partridge in a pear tree no beans no beans, no curses, no yeah. nothing. Great. My notes for this one are really interesting. 
I'm gonna read them without any context, and I want you to. I love that. Tell me what yeah. I mean in these. Okay. Jellyfish. Oh, fun quiz. Jellyfish. Oh, that's the dresses for the fairies. Okay. Let's see. The sneeze is triggering. <gasps> When Sneezy sneezes on the food, oh my right. god, get, put a fucking mask on. <laughs> Why is everyone being weird? <laughs> okay, I, I don't know what that one is. Um, that is any time at any point in the show. I have Miner's Day written down without an apostrophe, so I think I know. Yeah, that's the, that's the poster that yep. has no apostrophe. What is this day? Leroy overshares. Well, yeah, that's his conversation yep. with Astrid. Uh, infantilize. <gasps> She just straight up infantilizes that man, like in Constantly. both verses. It's oh, yeah. very upsetting. So, so you have the truth, the lie detector thing, superpower. Mm-hmm. I need to call it a superpower. It's not a lie detector. It's a superpower. It should be called a lie detector or an intuition. Right. But it's Everyone not. knows that but lie detectors she, are sometimes faulty. Then I wrote, "Why is she incompetent?" <laughs> well, that's uh, I. I mean, that could have referred to a number of people, but right? in this episode, it refers to Nova and oh. Astrid. Okay. Because at no point is she on screen and not fucking something up. That's fair. And last of all, not least, my note just says the carrot. So. I'm still mad about that carrot. Um, wow. I just, I, okay, let's just go through, let's run through mine. All right, I'm ready. Uh, I didn't bring it up, but there there is something that's very upsetting to me about the fact that Nova is the reason that Dreamy wake, like, cracks out of his shell early. Yep. Early. I don't like it. There's no. something about a maternal thing there, and I don't like it. No. Uh, then we have dwarves are baby men. <laughs> no. <laughs> because they are. They're baby men. How do dwarves make more dwarves? Oh. Still really upset about that. Where do those eggs come from? Hmm. Why is incompetent Nova given all the important tasks of picking up the fairy dust for the here? Nova. And then here's my last note. The fuck is with the carrot? <laughs> I like it. That's the moment you and I both stop picking your own super spell. That's why I, that's no, I was done. We just stopped. I was done. I was like, okay, whatever. I don't care. This I'm is the too show upset. Now. The show is just the carrot. Wow, this has been a bad time. This has been a horrible time, that made but it, it was super fun. Time. Yeah. Yeah, locally famous Matthew Winter really brought some light and I, levity into I need this you guys show. To drop a comment if you know why locally famous Matthew Winter is locally famous. Indeed. There's many reasons. He's not famous locally, but he is fa- locally famous. Yes. Just not here. Yeah. Wherever here is for you. Maybe maybe for you he Maybe is there. Lo- he might be locally famous and famous locally. Yeah. For you. He's just not here where we are. Exactly. Man, but this was bad. This has been a bad time. Draw, uh, and again, um, I just I'm gonna say this one more time. What would your What would your dwarf name be? Yeah. Let us know. Let I'm us know curious. in the comments. Um, and uh, don't forget if you're on Apple Podcast or yeah. anything, if you want to leave us a rating and a review, that helps us reach more people. Yeah. I don't know why you'd want to share us with people, people, but go like for it. It's super fun. Yeah. Um. Uh, so yeah. Enjoy your week, but we can only go up from here. We can only go up from here. And again, if you have any questions, comments, yes. concerns, please send them over to our Instagram at, yes. at wine, wine, and what? Or, or our, to, G- uh, our Gmail, also wine, wine, and what? And those links yep. will also be in the summary. It's going to be a hefty summary with oh, yeah. and all the stuff. All the yeah. Things. And again, spelled just like our title and the drinks first, yep. the Attitude is second. Drinks always come first. (laughs) Drinks lead to the attitude. Exactly. (laughs) But yeah, great news. We can only go up from here. Yes. Have a great week, everyone. Yep. Bye. Bye.